So I want to show you today a couple examples of how to evaluate inverse trig functions. A bunch of examples up here, and we should be able to figure out the answer to all of these equations without using a calculator. We'll just refer to the unit circle. Now if we start here and we look at sine inverse of 1 half, this 1 half is not an angle because we're looking at sine inverse. Instead, 1 half refers to a point on the unit circle. Because we're asking about sine and not cosine or tangent inverse, the 1 half refers to a y value. So this question is really, which angle, when I plug it into sine, gives me 1 half? In other words, which angle corresponds to a y value of 1 half on the unit circle? And the way we can answer this question is just by looking at a unit circle. I have one right here, so let's just take a look at it. When is the y value 1 half? Well, right there, the y value is 1 half. So what's the angle? The angle is pi over 6, so that should be our answer, pi over 6. When is the y value equal to negative square root of 2 over 2? Oh, well, there's one, but there's another. Which one do we use? Do we, should our answer be 5 pi over 4, or should it be 7 pi over 4? Turns out we don't want either of those answers, because sine inverse must give us an answer between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Neither of these are between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2, but we could get to this version of negative square root of 2 over 2 by going negative pi over 4 radians. So that's what our answer is, negative pi over 4. What about cosine inverse of 0? When is the x value 0? Ah, right up here. So the angle is pi over 2. How about cosine inverse of the square root of 3 over 2? Um, there's one, and there's another. Now which one do we use? Well, cosine inverse needs to be between 0 and pi. So we're going to use the pi over 6. What about tangent inverse of 1? Tangent, remember, always asks for y over x. So tangent inverse of 1 says when is y over x equal to 1? At what angle? Well, y over x equals 1 means the x and y values are the same. That happens at an angle of pi over 4. So the answer to tangent inverse of 1 is pi over 4. Tangent inverse of negative 1, well, same deal, but now the x needs to be the opposite of the y, so we can be down here where it says 7 pi over 4, but again, just like sine inverse, tangent inverse needs to be between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2, so the answer to tangent inverse of negative 1 is negative pi over 4. All right, let's see if you can do some on your own now. Let me pull up the other ones. Take a second and pause this video, try these out on your own, and then we'll come back and see how you did. So please pause the video now. All right, here are the answers. Sine inverse of 3 pi over 2 asks what angle corresponds to a y value of the square root of 3 over 2. That angle is pi over 3. Pi over 3 is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, so we're all good. Sine inverse of negative 1, when is the y value negative 1? at the bottom of the unit circle. So we want the angle to be negative pi over 2. 3 pi over 2 would not work because it's not between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Cosine of theta, cosine inverse of 1. Cosine inverse of 1 happens at an angle of, well, 0, 0 radians. Cosine inverse of negative 1 half well, negative one-half means we're in the second or third quadrants, but cosine inverse always gives us an answer between zero and pi, so this must be two pi over three. Tangent inverse of zero, well, that means the y value must be zero, because tangent is y over x, so that happens at zero radians. And finally, how about this tangent inverse of the square root of three? Well, square root of three is nowhere on the unit circle, but remember, tangent's always giving us a y over x. So now we're given a y over x, square root of 3, and we want to figure out what the angle is. Square root of 3 
can be written as the square root of 3 over 2 all divided by 1 half. And you just kind of have to know that, or you can just guess and check. You know it's going to be this or the reciprocal of this fraction. But since it is this fraction, the y value is the square root of 3 over 2, the x value is 1 half, and we know that happens when theta is pi over 3. All right, so that's how you evaluate some inverse trig functions. Um, I hope this has helped, and thanks for watching.